Hello everyone. This lecture is about organic reaction mechanisms in chemistry. We can divide the organic reaction mechanisms into four main categories. The first one is free radical reactions. The second one is electrophilic reactions. These can be further divided into electrophilic addition reactions and electrophilic substitution reactions. The third category is nucleophilic reactions. These can be further divided into three categories. The first one is nucleophilic addition reactions, then nucleophilic substitution reactions, and finally nucleophilic addition elimination reactions. And the final category is elimination reactions. Now let's have a look at all these reactions one by one. We start with free radical reactions. Before we start the reactions, we should be clear about what the free radicals are. A free radical is a particle with an unpaired electron. It is formed due to equal splitting of covalent bond. For example, have a look at this chlorine molecule. A chlorine molecule is formed between two chlorine atoms and they share a pair of electrons. When a chlorine molecule is split, usually by using UV light, both the chlorine molecules are free and each one of them takes its own electron. Each chlorine atom has got a one unpaired electron. It is this unpaired electron which makes free radical very reactive. To have a better understanding, we can have a look at this figure. On the left hand side, we've got a normal atom. It's got two electrons in its outer shell and it's a heavy atom. While on the right hand side, we have a free radical. It's only got one electron and is always trying to steal electrons from another atom, which makes it really reactive. Some of the common examples of free radicals include chlorine free radical hydroxyl radical, and superoxide anion. Now let's move on to the mechanism of reaction of free radicals. It takes place in three steps. The first step is initiation reaction. During this step, free radicals are generated. Let's consider the example of chlorine molecule. Because of the UV light, the chlorine molecule is split into individual atoms, each carrying its unpaired electron. Now because these are free radicals, they are very reactive and they will react with the normal molecules. Ok, now let's move on to the second step. The second step is called propagation reactions. And of course during this step, the free radicals are used up and created and that starts a kind of chain reaction. Because free radicals are very reactive, so they try to snatch electrons from the normal molecules. For example, if there's a methane molecule, the chlorine free radical will react with the methane molecule and will convert into the methyl free radical while it makes a bond with the released hydrogen and makes HCl. Now chlorine is satisfied because it has made a bond with the hydrogen and it's a normal a free radical, but it has generated a methyl free radical. Methyl radical will be reactive and will react with the other normal molecules, which are chlorine molecules, making methyl chloride and at the same time generating chlorine free radical. And then this chlorine radical will react with the other methyl molecules, starting the cycle again. Now you must be thinking that if this keeps going on, where would this end up? So the answer is this process keeps going on until we have no more molecules and we only have the free radicals. So at the end we will have plenty of methyl radicals and chlorine radicals. Ok, now let's move on to this step number 3, which is called the termination reaction. During this step, the free radicals are mopped up. But this means that the free radicals will combine with one another for example, chlorine free radical will combine with the chlorine free radical to make the chlorine molecule or methyl radical will combine with the methyl radical to make C2H6 or methyl radical will combine with the chlorine free radical to make the methyl chloride. This third step is really important because during this step we get rid of the free radicals and they are all converted into the molecules.